Using perspectives in Notion unlocks a lot of cool features and user experiences that you won't get with vanilla Notion. And if you're not familiar with what Perspectives is, you're gonna get a crash course here and I'm gonna show you around a simple task manager using what I call the Perspectives method. But without going into too much more detail, let's jump right into this task manager in Notion using the Perspectives method. When I say the Perspectives method, what I really mean is that you're creating mini applications in Notion. And that might sound weird because you're opening the application of Notion, right? But Notion is providing you the tools to make your own software. So the software we're making is essentially an application. So in this case, we're looking at a task manager and we're seeing some tasks on this front window and this might not look too crazy, but it's when you start interacting with the other, what I call perspectives, that you start to get the sense for why this is really powerful. You're able to focus on one thing that you would typically open up software to do. And in this case, it's task management, but you also have other applications like a CRM, if you wanna manage different people or clients or prospects and leads, or you can create one for knowledge management and how to connect your different notes together and come up with new uh, ideas out of the knowledge that you collect and create new things. There are a lot of different applications that you can create and you're really not limited to some system that I'm trying to uh, make you fit into, but you're able to create whatever's useful for you. What I'm doing with the perspectives method is actually providing you with more of a meta system. It's a system for your system. It's allowing you to build something to suit your process. And so I wanna help you in that endeavor to build a system that suits your process because I think that's the biggest unlock you can get from Notion and it's actually sometimes the hardest thing for people to grasp. They're greeted with a blank page and they don't know what to do. In this task manager, what we're looking at is a to-do list. Pretty, pretty self-explanatory. This is very simple. I'm not trying to make it complicated. You got some to-dos and then you've got some things that are already done and all the projects that they attach to. So connecting tasks to projects. And then over here, we can look at the projects associated with our task management. So typically when you have a database, and let's say that you're putting the database in the sidebar and uh, you're jumping between tasks and projects and you're able to manage tasks that way, but it might get a little complicated as you add in more objects to interact with. The reason why perspectives is great is because you can bring in multiple streams of data into one cohesive application within Notion. So we're looking at tasks here within our task manager. Now we're looking at projects and then we're looking at meetings and we're going down into notes and then I could even expand this as much as I want. So we're not just stuck, but it's very scalable and very fast to do. Let's say that uh, we're dealing with an outside contractor or we're, we've got stakeholders we need to talk to. So we're, we've got this element in our task management where we wanna keep track of the contacts that uh, are in our system. So we could just create a new perspective, call it contacts, You know, maybe change the icon to a person. How about that one? And then all we would do is pull in our contacts or our people database, a linked database right here, drop it in and format uh, all the filtering and sorting and things like that to make it actually useful. And now we've brought in another element into our task management. But for now, we'll keep it simple. That's not actually the case for us. And we'll jump around, let's look at the projects. We've got active projects. This is filtered by the status being not complete. So if it's not started or in progress, I wanna see them, but I only wanna see I wanna see the ones that are in progress at the top. And so that's why I've got it sorted by status descending. And then we can just deal with projects in a board view. There's a million different ways to uh, show your data. You're not limited to what I'm showing you here, but this is a great starting point. And before you feel like you have to copy everything down before you miss it on this video, I'm going to give this template away for free. Link in the description, just go and you can download it and play with it for yourself. And I will also be dropping in a link for the template for a blank pack. So if you wanna start creating another application besides task management from scratch, the same way that I do, uh, I'll give you the same template that I use, you'll be able to do that as well. And what I mean by the template is over here, we're actually dealing with databases. So this is the pack template, very simple, just two pages. And what I do when I wanna make a new application, I just duplicate that. I'll get to that in just a second. To finish this off, we've got some meetings uh, filtered by date as after one month ago on this view. So I only wanna see my relevant ones if they're um, 
within the last month or in the future, we're gonna see them here. And then the old ones will show up here and they're both sorted by date descending. And then going down to notes, we've got all of our notes. You can connect those to a project. And then if you're done with them, you can archive it and that will show up in the archive. So you're not deleting it, you'll always still have it, but you can get it out of this view right here. So when we go over to projects too, uh, and we open up a project, we have a template. So this is where all of the elements that relate to the project will come together in a uh, filtered view. And it is using what we would call a self-referencing filter. You don't need to know exactly what that means, but just know that you can create a new project template and these linked views, notes and meetings and tasks, they will automatically be connected and related. So you don't have to manually connect every single one. But even within the project itself, you can see the tasks that need to be done, the done tasks. You'll, you'll notice that we don't see that same project relation over here because we're in the project itself. So we don't need to, we don't need to see the project it's related to. So as we get further and further in and more focused on the element that we're trying to work in, uh, we can get rid of distractions and get rid of irrelevant information. So we're trying to be very contextual, contextual with our information for what we're looking at. So you can see we've got the, the map of Middle Earth notes. You saw that over in the uh, notes right here. And then when we jumped into that project, because it's related to this Find the One Ring project, a little Lord of the Rings love, anybody? The map of the Middle Earth is showing up in the notes. And then uh, same with the meetings, you're seeing it all related. So if I was to add a task here, what are we doing? Find the one ring, decipher the writing on the ring. When I created it in here, it's already getting some information attached to it because I've, I've gotten more contextual. So when I create in that context, it's actually going to add the things uh, relevant to it. If you look at this task, it's already attached to the project. Uh, find the one ring. We don't have a due date on it yet. And it's also not done. So when we jump over to this task page, we can see that that task that we created within the project, because it's a task and this is a view of all tasks, it's gonna populate right here along with everything else. And so because we created it in that project, you can see that project is attached right here and it's showing up for us to do. So if I press done, it's gone and it'll show up in our done view right there. So that is the overview of this task manager. Again, feel free to download this and play with it. For those of you who are familiar with the perspectives method already, at least the version one that was released a while back, you'll notice that there are a lot of things that are streamlined now or are a little different, but I think they are obvious how much of an upgrade they are from the version one. And the big one is that this sidebar navigation I think now it's just better to house it all in a synced block because previously every page that you created would have its own instance of this perspectives menu. And that allowed for flexibility that you just really didn't need. So in this case, I thought it was better to put it all in the synced block. And that way, when you rearrange these perspectives in one of the pages, they will be rearranged in all of the pages because they're all just looking at one linked view and whatever you change in one will change across the other. So let's go back to normal. So because of this, we also don't have to use the sort order anymore. And that was probably the biggest, uh, it wasn't a pain. It was just kind of tedious. It took five seconds, but uh, we don't have to do that anymore. We got rid of the sort order so you don't have to sort these. And so this menu does not use a sort anymore because you can just manually rearrange them. We still have the hide from list and you'll notice that I've hidden the settings uh, from the list because it's not technically, it's not a perspective of your work. It's more of a system management uh, view. And so what I did was I popped it out and I only did it on this first landing page. So whatever the landing page is of the application, I've got settings as a call out block beneath it. And when you go to any of the other ones, it doesn't show up. So just one spot to get in there, but sometimes you will need to jump in here and that's how you can do it. In the case of this template, I've got all the databases housed in that settings page and you can feel free to, to leave it there. Or if you have a central location in your Notion workspace for databases, you can just grab these and move them over to that spot and you'll be good to go. Or if you already have some of these databases in place, Another amazing part about using perspectives is that uh, you can use your own data. You can bring your own data, BYOD. 
and you can install an application and uh, bring in linked views of any of your databases without having to uh, destroy any of your established systems like most templates do when you uh, install them. So love that. We're not actually giving you any data. We're giving you a view of the data so that you can see it in the way you want and collect it in a way that's intuitive. And then we've got this link over to our HQ. You'll be able to hop back and forth between your HQ and your pages. In the previous version of Perspectives, there was a window down here with links to all of your other applications. And it just wasn't that useful and took up and cluttered the space and kind of got you out of that focus. When it gave you one click away from the applications, you're now just two clicks away. You can just boom. And then if you have another one, boom. So got rid of that. And I think it just cleans things up really nicely. And then you'll also notice that the template for a new perspective is different. Um, I'm not doing the main and menu distinction. Again, if you, you'd, you'd have to watch the first video and I would recommend it if you wanna go into detail, uh, but just keep some of these new design elements in mind. Not doing that and just doing one clean call out box, which I love the aesthetic of. It makes things feel nice and tidy and like they belong. And there's a rare case where I actually use that menu feature. I do occasionally, but it's just not enough to warrant including it in a template. So let's go with the rule rather than the exception for how to design. And so I like to uh, put a little space right here so that we don't get that little text box. And with the new AI, you just have to hold shift and press space for it to do that. And then I like to keep one little block available and we're doing this in the template so that when I pull in a linked database, I just drop it right in and it looks clean and ready to go. And all of these look consistent across every single one. And just a, a pro tip for those of you who are trying to maybe take what you've established and, and do this, which is, is definitely possible with the synced block, just make sure that you make the original synced block in the template for the pack. So this synced block, make sure it's the original in here and uh, make sure you do that in, especially in the pack template so that when you duplicate this, uh, it creates a new tree of synced blocks and doesn't carry over across all your applications so that they all share the synced block because that obviously wouldn't work, that would break it. And for any of you wondering why I don't put it in a button so that you can just press the button and duplicate it, I would love that. But for some reason, when you do that, uh, the synced block, again, just uh, goes across all of them and doesn't create a new tree of synced blocks. So this is what we got to do for now, but it's not too difficult. You just have to press this menu button and duplicate. So for example, if I wanted to create a CRM, like I was talking about earlier, uh, I just duplicated that. I've got this pack template. I'm gonna pull it down here and rename the database CRM pack. So I know I'm dealing with a pack. And then I want to rename the landing page CRM. This is basically the name of the app that I'm creating. So CRM, we're gonna open that page and copy the link. I pressed Command L on Mac, but you can see over here, you can also press this button, copy link. And then I've already got the HQ loaded in because this is my system. So I'm always gonna wanna go back to my HQ. Let's jump over there and Command V. And I like to link it so that it takes up the whole block. So now we've got a task manager. You saw all this. We just jump out to our HQ and then go into our CRM. And we're, we're dividing our work based on application. And I think this is really intuitive. One, because that's just how we normally think, but also because that's just how software is. Just think about the kind of apps that you would open up on your phone. You would open up an app for a specific purpose, for specific workflows, and this mirrors that perfectly. And so you can think about your life and divide your life, maybe not in terms of arbitrary like buckets that sometimes it's hard to like really nail down how you divide your life or things overlap. It's not me see, but in this case, I think it's actually fairly easy to divide your life in terms of the workflows that you do. And so it mirrors really well and plays really well with the way notion uh, is built to empower you to build tools for yourself. So we've got this CRM here and what I would do is build a people database and then I would pull in that people database and maybe you have different uh, ways of looking at people. Maybe you have people that are a certain type of contact, maybe they're personal or business. Maybe one of them is a client. Maybe you wanna stage them in terms of like 
going from the top of the funnel all the way to a, a sold and closed client if you're in business. Or if you're just a person and you wanna keep track of all your friends, you can keep track of their birthdays. The world is yours. Again, I'm not giving you a system. I'm giving you a meta system for you to build whatever works for you. So I would build out the CRM, create new perspectives for all of the different things that I wanted to see, and then uh, go from there. And again, we're cooking. I can create as many applications as I would like. All I have to do is duplicate the template, rename a couple things, drop a link in here, and then I've got a system that is up and running very fast, can scale very fast, and I think is just really just smooth and a joy to use. It just feels right. I love staying focused in task management, but also being able to slice my data any way I like. So that is how to task manage in Notion using the perspectives method slash how to build out new applications using the perspectives method. There's a lot to unpack in that and I, I wanna keep the video somewhat short, so I won't go into any more detail, but please let me know if there's anything you'd like me to talk about further. Maybe it's about this, maybe it's about how to do perspectives for some other use case. Um, let me know and I would love to keep uh, creating content that is useful for you. But until next time, I will see you in the next video.